Reiner in Bessigheim. I should. I, I even speak a little German. I should know Bessigheim. There you go. <laughs> Germany says watching your videos completely revolutionized the way I hear music. Oh my! Thank you. Um, the first time I listened to some DSD, I felt as if someone pulled the plugs out of my ears. <laughs> I've had the exact same experience. It's, I mean, yeah, DSD is amazing. Um, I, uh, let's see, thank, thank you for DSD. Well, I wish I could take credit for DSD, but I can't. Um, you recently explained the function of an input blocking cap and mentioned a servo circuit that you use in your devices. Could you tell us something more about servo circuits and how they work? Sure. So, when we amplify something, take, take any of this equipment here, when we amplify an analog signal, we want to amplify only the music and nothing else. So, all circuits run on DC, battery voltage, direct current, right? They'll run on like this tube circuit over here. I don't know if you can see what I'm pointing at. This is the BHK. It's a vacuum tube preamplifier. So that's running on a couple of hundred volts DC. And an amplifier, whether it's a preamplifier or a power amplifier, amplifies any voltage that comes into it, whether it's DC or AC. Now, sound is AC. It's moving uh, current up and down, right? You, you have a musical signal and it's moving up and down. DC, we don't want to amplify DC. That's bad because we don't want it on the output because that's, you know, what we want is zero volts DC on the output. So if by chance we were to put in some DC and, and all preamps, power amps have some measure of DC at their output. We measure down, it's like we'll, let, we'll allow maybe five millivolts, 10 millivolts of DC. And typically that's not a bad thing. It's, it's rare that it's ever zero. And when you put that into another product, it will amplify it. So let's say ours puts out 10 millivolts of DC. If the amplifier you go into is not designed to block that DC voltage and only pass the AC music voltage, then if it has a gain of 30, you'll have 300 millivolts at its output because it's amplifying that 10 millivolts at the input. Okay, so not to make this too long. What we want to do is block any incoming DC. We don't want it. Again, only want AC, the music signal, right? Got to keep it clean. So one way to do it is just put a capacitor. A capacitor won't allow DC to pass, but it will allow AC to pass. Very cool device. So you put a blocking cap on the front, done. Only problem, it changes the sound. Now we're listening through that capacitor. and in anything PS Audio makes, if we can avoid it, we don't want that capacitor there. So what do you do about it? You add what's called a servo circuit. And the servo circuit is basically, it's an op amp, and it is measuring the difference between the input and ground. So ground is zero, and the input from a DC standpoint should also be zero. So if all of a sudden this servo circuit sees a difference, let's call it our 10 millivolts. It says, uh-huh, I don't want to amplify that. And it's, you, you can look them up. I mean, it's basically a, a, what we call an integrator. Picture an op amp and in its feedback loop and on its input are low pass filters so that they work at say, oh, I don't know, a second, two seconds, maybe 10 seconds. So anything that's happening faster than 10 seconds is not going to be amplified. They have these capacitors on the input, but no signal is actually going through it. It's just measuring this very low changing DC voltage. And the output of that then goes in to upsetting the balance of a diff pair. So 
if the DC comes in and it says, oh, it's a big lazy dog, it sees it, it says, okay, I've waited long enough to know that that is not a music signal, that's DC. I'm going to slightly shift the amplification characteristics of our differential pair and the output DC goes back down. And that's all it is, a very slow moving capacitor that is not in the signal path. Okay? I hope that helps. Wasn't too crazy technical? Maybe it was. I don't know. Okay. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later.